Hey guys, it's me, Peter, with the Audigo Club, and I want to do an end of year market update on the real estate market. Uh, it's December 9th, and uh, the market is doing some funky things. So normally the market slows down during the winter time because a lot of people are distracted with Christmas lights and Thanksgiving turkeys, and let's just be honest, people don't really want to move during the winter time. Um, however, because of the low inventory market and the sustaining high demand that we've had, we're still getting incredible multiple offers. In fact, we just put a listing out there recently and we ended up getting $225,000 above asking price, waiving everything. And this is a common phenomenon. We also had a buyer who ended up putting an offer recently and they had, I think, over 15 offers with waiving everything at a ridiculous price above asking price. So uh, let's talk about some statistics. Why is this happening? Well, in uh, st well, first of all, let's talk about inventory. As a reminder, six months of inventory is considered a normal market, right? Uh, which means basically in six months, if no new listings came up on the market, then all of the listings will have sold. That's the way they measure it. Right now in Snohomish County, the months of inventory is 0.24 months of inventory. 0.24, there's not even one month of inventory. And in King County, there's 0.38 months of inventory. Even in places like Thurston County, which a lot of people are actually going to for affordability issues, uh, is 0.35 months of inventory. So it's pretty ridiculous right now. And, uh, and, and what's interesting about Seattle, let me just a uh, little side, um, Seattle actually stayed the same in prices. I have a myriad of reasons why this was the case, but uh, what's the, the even more interesting is on the east side of Seattle, the appreciation was at around 26%. So this is, I mean, we're talking ridiculous, unprecedented appreciation rates um, that has been happening here in Washington. Um, and we are definitely one of the highest in the whole nation. So. Uh, so the, the question I get all the time is, what Peter, what's going to happen in 2022? Well, I'm not an expert in this, but I follow the best experts, people who have really quality data, who don't skew the data like our government does, uh, which we're going to talk about that in a little bit, um, but really, really quality data. They actually, they're the ones who uh, predict the last crash, et cetera, et cetera. They're just really good. So Matthew Gardner, he says in 2022, the market's actually going to slow. Um, now, when I say slow, like I said, we had 26% appreciation on the east side. And what he predicts is in King County, the appreciation should be around 8% and it, King and Snohomish County. And in Pierce County, it should be at about 11%. Now, these are still pretty high numbers. They're really high numbers. But compared to 26%, I mean, that's a pretty significant decrease. And the reason why he believes this is going to happen is because of affordability. You know, a lot of people are being priced out of the market right now. Um, and plus, you know, we're going to have modestly rising interest rates as well. Interest rates create a big difference when it comes to uh, house prices. So do so. And a lot of people are asking me then, Peter, should I buy a home? Should I buy a home? Well, I want you to consider two things. First of all, um, I don't believe there's going to be a crash. I'll say it right now as far as I know, unless something happens, I mean, the caveat is something could happen, something crazy. I don't see a crash happening. Um, the only way I can see a crash happening is if the, uh, if the interest rates rise up significantly, which could happen, uh, which would decrease affordability significantly. But think about it this way. Um, with inflation, now our CPI, this consumer price index, um, everyone's freaking out about it being about 6%. That's the way we, we calculate inflation, right? But the problem is, and I'm sure a lot of you guys know this, like the 6% number that they put out there, there's over 200 categories. They actually chose one of the smallest, uh, basically category categories um, to state that, you know, that inflate, that's what the average inflation rate is. Whereas if you look at many other categories like energy, for example, I mean, we've seen significant, significant inflation rates. Um, like, look at our gas prices. I mean, you guys, this, this is all stuff that we see all the time. Gas prices have increased significantly. 
Um, and that's the real, I mean, really the inflation rates are a lot higher than what the government says it's going to be. So how does this pertain to mortgages? Well, here's the thing. If you borrow a 30 year fixed mortgage, well, if you borrow a hundred thousand dollars today, uh, in 10, 20 years, well, you paying at the current inflation rate, you paying that hundred thousand dollars back will be significantly less because the value of our dollar becomes less. So um, me speaking with a lot of very wealthy, very savvy investors, um, that's the reason why they're trying to actually leverage as much as possible because they see the inflation rates going up so much. And as inflation rates continue to grow, well, then home prices will probably continue to grow. So just consider those things. Um, I believe, see, here's the thing, we could wait until next year, but things are continuing to be uh, more expensive. I mean, even 8% is still pretty high. So. Just some things to think about. I don't want you guys to do anything that you're not comfortable with. If you um, can't afford things right now, don't over leverage, don't over borrow. Uh, huge belief there. Anyway, guys, uh, I hope this video helps. If I don't talk to you or see you, please have an amazing Christmas and a great new year. 2022 is gonna be the best year ever.